Hey everyone, we're going to look at this deck tech. This is my Aurelia the War Leader deck. Uh, Aurelia was actually the very first mythic I ever got out of any pack. Um, if I remember right, I believe it was a, uh, a 2015 deck builder's kit. Uh, it had a pack of Gate Crash in it, and I do have the original one. That's, you know, the one I pulled. But when they released the guild kits, the, I just thought the artwork on this was absolutely stunning. Not to mention it has the legendary border, which I think is fantastic. So let's get straight into it. Uh, we're going to look at all of our creatures first, uh, starting with, of course, our commander. We have Aurelia the War Leader for two, red, red, white, white. It's a legendary angel. Uh, she comes in with fly flying, vigilance, and haste. And whenever she attacks for the first time, you actually get to basically just attack everything again. Uh, you untap all your stuff and then another combat phase. I find this to be absolutely powerful if you've got your board set up right. I have actually ended games on the same turn that I cast her. You know, but of course you have to have your board set up before that. Uh, Got to have all your creatures out and whatnot. So there's our commander. Next we're going to look at all of just the regular creatures. Starting with our one drops. We have Legion Loyalist, of course having Haste and Battalion, a classic Boros uh, mechanic. We have True Fire Paladin. Uh, having Vigilance. Now, the mana abilities, I I don't find myself to get flooded in this deck very much. I mean, a lot of people hate on red-white, um, but getting the plus two, plus oh until end of turn, that can definitely help out a whole lot. And of course, the first strike, meaning you'll deal your damage first. Next, we have Swift Blade Vindicator. Uh, a 1-1 one, one for two doesn't seem all that great, I know, but it comes with Double Strike, Vigilance, and Trample. So what you can do basically is uh, there's a lot of mentor in this deck and a lot of pump spells, enchantments, and whatnot. So you can get your mentor going off, then you can actually do some real damage with that as well. Next we have the Sunhome Guild Mage, uh, just a 2-2 two, two for 2. Uh, I don't really worry about the mana abilities on this one too awful much, especially the second one. Uh, paying 4 for a soldier token, not all that great, uh, You know, again, unless you were to get flooded. But uh, that actually does come in handy later. We have an enchantment that helps us out with our tokens. We'll get to that in a minute, though. Next, we have Sky Knight Vanguard, 1-2 uh, with flying. Now, this is actually cool. Whenever it attacks, then you make uh, a token that's attacking. So that in itself can be helpful, especially if you've got all your pump stuff out. Next, we have Sun Home Stalwart, uh, first strike, 2-2 two, two for 2. Uh, this one does have the mentor mechanic. It doesn't help too awful much because it's only a 2-2, two -two, but there's a lot of 1-1, one -one, or not 1-1 one -one creatures, but a lot of 1-1 one -one token generation in this as well, so that can help pump them as well. Next we have the Grand Abolisher. This is basically just for protection uh, during your turn. You know, your opponents can't react to anything if you've got this out. Next we have Tajik, Legion's Edge. Uh, haste being always wonderful and Mentor also being very helpful. Uh, preventing all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. Awesome. Absolutely amazing. And then of course you can give him First Strike. Next we have Sky Knight Legionnaire. Flying in Haste. 2-2 uh, for 3. Not bad, especially with the Flying in Haste. Now we have the Viachino First Blade comes in with haste and when it enters the battlefield it gets 2-2 until the end of turn. A 4-4 four, four for 3, not bad. Next we have Legion War Boss. This is one of our main token generators. Uh, the neat thing is you don't even really have to attack with him. Or I say really, you don't have to attack with him, you just go to combat. Uh, the token has to attack, but you know, you're not actually losing a creature, you're just losing a token if you know it gets destroyed. And of course, Mentor. Next we have Thalia, Heretic Cathar. She has First Strike, and the big thing with her, the main reason she's in here, is creatures and non-basic lands that your opponents control, uh, they enter the battlefield tap, so that really, really slows them down. Then, of course, we have the other Aurelia, the Exemplar of Justice, uh, Flying and Mentor, and then whenever you go into combat, you choose up to one creature you control, and until the end of turn, it gets plus two, plus oh, and you can, of course, target herself with that. Uh, and then if it's red, it gains Trample, and then if it's white, it gains Vigilance. So, of course, if you target one of your red-white creatures, it gets both of those. Very awesome. Next, we have the other Tajik, Blade of the Legion. 
he's indestructible and he has a battalion effect. Um, one of the, you know, again, classic Boros keywords. Uh, when him and at least two others attack, he gets plus five, plus five till the end of turn. So, yeah, four for a two two is not all that great, but considering he's indestructible, I think that's pretty awesome. Then we have the hammer dropper. This is probably the best mentor. Uh, well, no, there's another one, uh, but one of the best mentor uh, creatures in the deck. You got a four mana cost. You get a five two, so his toughness isn't all that great, but he can pump almost anything without having to be uh, pumped himself. Then we have the True Fire Captain, also has Mentor, and whenever it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to a target player. Not super critical, I mean, it could save your butt, you never know. Um, then we have Odric Master Tactician, he has First Strike, and whenever him and at least three other creatures attack, I choose which creatures block and how those creatures block. So basically it gives me control of combat. Then we have our god, Aroas, god of victory. He's indestructible, of course. He's an enchantment creature. Uh, he's not a creature if your devotion to red and white's less than seven. Uh, when you have him out, creatures you control can't be blocked by except for two or more, so basically gives everybody menace. And it prevents all damage that would be dealt to attacking creatures. So basically making your creatures not necessarily indestructible per se, but basically. Then we have Argus Coast, Wojek Veteran. Whenever he attacks, attacking red creatures get plus two, plus oh, and attacking white creatures get plus oh, plus two. So basically, he himself, when he attacks, turns into a five, five, so, you know, a five, five, four, five is not terrible. And then he makes everybody else stronger as well. And again, if your creature's red and white, gets both, uh, both buffs. Then we have Anya, Merciless Angel. Uh, a little bit of an angel sub theme in this uh, you know of course Aurelia being the leader of the Boros Guild uh, her herself being an angel I decided to put you know quite a few angels in here as well those are your real uh, boss monsters if you will uh, flying and she gets plus three plus three for each opponent whose life total is less than his or her half, uh, half of his or her starting life total and uh, if just one opponent's is less than half, then she has indestructible. So this is definitely something you want to get late game. Uh, you know, say you're playing a typical pot of four, and all three of your opponents are below 20, uh, she's going to be a 13-13. Yeah. Monstrous. Then we have the classic, Sarah Angel. Uh, just flying in vigilance. Uh, three and two white for a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, you know, nothing crazy special, but again, the classic angel. Then we have Swath Cutter Giant. It's got Vigilance. Whenever it attacks, it deals one damage to each creature defending player controls. So if this attacks an opponent that's got, you know, like a lot of 1-1 tokens on the field, they're gone. Uh, now this is probably my favorite mentor creature in the whole deck. The Light of the Legion. You got a 5-5 five, five for 6 with Flying and Mentor. And when it dies, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each white creature you control. Primarily, all the creatures in here are either white or red and white. There's very few mono-red creatures. Then we have Angelic Skirmisher. This basically just gives uh, all of your creatures any of the abilities. Uh, either First Strike, Vigilance, or Lifelink. Any one of those. Now, this next, these next two form a little combo that I absolutely love. Uh, you've got the Subjugator Angel. When it enters the battlefield, you tap all creatures that your opponents control. Then, if you're fortunate enough to get your Sunblast Angel out, you know, almost right after it, that is 12 mana in one turn, very unlikely, but possible. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, destroy all tapped creatures. So you can see that that is an absolutely devastating combo. Again, yes, it costs 12 mana, but it's still pretty awesome. All right. Then we have Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. A little damage on this card, but very playable still. Uh, first Strike and Flying. If a source would deal damage to an opponent or permanent that that opponent controls, it deals double. So basically anything, uh, any damage dealt to any opponent is doubled, whether it's from yourself or from another opponent. And then if any source would deal damage to you or one of your per uh, permanents, you have it. So very, very powerful card. 
Uh, then we have Safara Sky's Blade. Uh, again, just another angel that I think is really awesome, uh, giving other creatures with flying indestructible. So mostly just your angels. Uh, speaking of angels, here's our last one. Oh, no, excuse me. Sorry, we have one more. Uh, Razia, the Boros Archangel, if I remember correctly, the original leader of the guild as well. Uh, flying Vigilance and Haste, a little expensive at 8 mana for a 6-3, but she is able to prevent damage, so, you know, not terrible. And I do want to point out, I didn't mention this earlier, that this, this deck is not, you know, optimized to be competitive. It's, it's a little bit more on the flavor side kind of thing. Uh, and our last card, our creature, is Rhea Dawnbringer, so very expensive at 9, but... At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, I say that's pretty worth it, especially if you've got some of your, you know, more costly creatures in the graveyard already. Uh, Rhea can just bring them right back to the battlefield. And uh, I, I do love her flavor text. You have not died until I consent. So, definitely one of my favorite additions to this deck. I did just update it recently up. Uh, to put in a few more of the angels, all right? So let's move on to the next topic. Okay, next we're gonna look at our enchantments. Our first enchantment is Assemble the Legion. Uh, this enchantment, uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you'll get a muster counter. And then right after you put the counter onto the enchantment, you get a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier token with haste. The neat thing is though, at each upkeep, you put another counter on it. So the next upkeep will be two, the next will be three, so on and so on. And then after you put that counter on there, you put tokens equal to the number of counters. So, you know, the first turn you play it, you've played it. You don't get to do anything. Second turn, you get one token. Third turn, two tokens. Fourth turn, three tokens, and so on and so forth. You know, they're just one ones. They do have haste, which is nice, but the real... The real awesome part is when you pair it with Divine Visitation. Basically, instead of making soldiers, you know, any of the token generation in the deck, if Divine Visitation is out, it'll create a 4-4 White Angel with Flying and Vigilance instead. So, if you have this and this out, it is absolutely devastating. You're getting a 4-4 Flying Angel with Vigilance, then you're getting two, then you're getting three and four, and so on. An absolutely devastating combo if you can get it out at the same time. Now along with that would be the Gleam of Battle. This is one of our pump enchantments. Whenever a creature you control attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So each time one of your creature uh, creatures attacks, it gets, it gets stronger each and every time. And of course with Aurelia out, you can have two battle phases per turn. Uh, another pump spell the Legion's Initiative, red creatures get plus one, plus oh, and white creatures get plus oh, plus one. So again, affecting both the multicolored creatures at the same time. Now the second part, you can exile this enchantment and then exile all creatures you control. Beginning of the next combat, you return those to the battlefield. Now, the big thing to that is protection. If, you know, someone's about to board wipe or, you know, anything like that, you can react to it with this, you know, to save all your creatures. It won't save all your tokens. You know, if you've got a field full of angels, they're gone. They're not coming back. But with the uh, with the Assemble the Legion Divine Visitation combo out, they'll be replenished very soon. We have Glory of Warfare. Uh, during your turn, your creatures get plus two, plus O, oh, and when it's not your turn, they get plus O, oh, plus two. So on your turn, it helps them attack, and when it's not your turn, it helps them defend. And then we have Cathar's Crusade. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So imagine, you know, you're putting a lot of creatures on the field. They just keep on and keep on. They get stronger and stronger and stronger. Then we have Gratuitous Violence. If a creature I control would deal damage to a creature or player, it deals double. So if you have this and Gisela out at the same time, we're talking massive amounts of damage. Massive damage. And then we have Street Ride. The main reason for Street Ride is just basically what, what it does. 
plus one plus O, and trample. It gives it to all creatures, as long as it's your turn, of course. Now we're going to look at our instants. First one being Aurelius Fury. Uh, it's an X red white spell, and basically, you however much you make X, you divide it among any target creatures or player. And if you deal damage to player uh, to creatures, you tap them. And then the players that take damage can't cast non-creature spells. So uh, you could barely pump anything into this just to prevent you know your opponents from casting anything you don't want them to. Boris Charm, choose one of the three modes, dealing four damage to a player or planeswalker. Uh, your stuff gains indestructible, or target creature gets double strike. You know, whichever suits the mood. Then we have Justice Strike. This is basically just single creature removal. Uh, depending on the creature, of course, target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Then we have Chance for Glory. Creatures you control gain indestructible, and then you take an extra turn. At the beginning of that turn's end step, you lose. Now, this this with the combination of the commander out at the same time absolutely can end games. Absolutely, you'll basically be getting four uh, four battle steps or combat phases. Uh, first turn, attack with Aurelia, untap, attack again, take your extra turn, attack with Aurelia, untap everything, attack again. Uh, if you can get Aurelia pumped enough, you can just end the game with her if, you know, if she deals enough combat damage. So, Lightning Helix, our next instant. Three damage to any target, and you gain three life. Master Warcraft. This one is very fun. You play it only before attacks are declared, and you basically control combat. You choose which creatures attack, and how each creature blocks. You can make everybody destroy all their stuff, or you can make nobody do anything. Then we've got War Leaders here, uh, Helix. Deals four damage to target creature or player, and you gain four life. Our only split card, or not our only one, but one of our only ones, uh, Wear and Tear. Wear destroys artifact, Tear destroys an enchantment. The neat thing about this is you can play them both, which I like. The split cards from the Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance, you can only play one side, which is kind of a bummer. Then you have Fortify, creatures you control get plus two, plus O, or plus O, plus two, depending on if you're attacking or defending. Then we have War Flare, creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Basically what I use this for is if I need to tap everything or almost everything going in for an attack, and then I need to defend myself on the next person's turn. So you can cast this at the last minute to defend yourself. And then last, we have Path to Exile. I was very fortunate to be able to get one of the Channel Fireball uh, command, uh, Commander in a Box uh, Magic Fest things, and uh, got all the awesome promos, the Path to Exile, the Soul Rings. Uh, figured Path to Exile fit in here perfectly. Again, being a staple white card, but this art, of course, having the awesome looking angel just made it fit even better. Now we're going to look at our sorceries. We have very, very few sorceries, but they can pack a real punch, especially this first one. Razia's Purification. Each player chooses three permanents that he or she controls and then sacrifices the rest. So you literally only pick three things to stay on the board. Lands, artifacts, creatures, enchantments, whatever. Everything else goes away. You can literally reduce somebody to having zero, one, or two, or three lands, and that can be absolutely crippling towards the late game. Our other split card, now of course, again, this one being from guilds, you can only play one side. Uh, you've got response, which deals five damage to attacking or blocking creature. That can be very helpful. But resurgence, this is the side that I usually go with. Creatures you control gain first strike and vigilance, so that in itself is very helpful. After this main phase, there is an additional combat phase. So again, with a combination of this, um, Aurelia, and our uh, Chance for Glory, you can be attacking and just wiping people out. Uh, player removal, if you will. Then we have Deafening Clarion. 
Uh, you choose, you know, one or two, one or both modes. Uh, deals either three damage to each creature, so it could be a board wipe. And then creatures you control gain life link until end of turn. Your life's real low, you need to swing in to boost your life. That'll do it for you. And then we have Idyllic Tutor. The main reason I put this in here uh, is, uh, you know, of course looking for enchantments, but we have our powerful enchantments. Uh, the Divine Visitation and the assemble the legion when you combine those two together you just get angels and more angels and more angels so that's it for our sorceries now let's take a look at some of our artifacts <clears throat> we have the boros signet very simple just filters one mana into red white uh, i went with the original ravnica one because i love the artwork on it it just looks really really amazing and kind of fits along with the war theme. Uh, then we have the Boros Locket, just another mana rock. Uh, also, if you are not necessarily flooded, but if you need some cards, you can put some mana into it to draw two cards. Then we have the Parhelion 2. This, uh, I am thinking of cutting this. It is rather expensive, but it does generate two angels per turn. Plus it has flying, first strike, and vigilance. So I'm a little hesitant to do that. Uh, you just crew it with uh, four, so it basically makes its own. You just crew it the first time, and then it just makes angels that can crew it the next turn. Then we have Glass of the Guild Pack to buff our multicolored creatures, you know, for only two. It gives all of our multicolored plus one, plus one. Then we have Tome of the Guild Pack, which is a little pricey at five, but it gives us card draw, and it's a mana rock. And then we have Tablet of the Guilds. Now, I only see this being helpful in two color decks, you know, maybe a three color, but you choose two colors, and whenever a, you cast a spell that's one of those, you gain one life for each of the chosen colors. You know, most of our spells are multicolor. You'll gain two life per spell. Then we have the Moon Sliver, uh, excuse me, Moon Silver Spear. Um, I was able to get the awesome promo artwork. I absolutely love this, and the foiling looks great on it. Um, just gives the equipped creature first strike and then it also generates angel tokens they just don't have vigilance which it's not that big a deal you know a 4-4 four, four flyer it's pretty awesome then we have our awesome soul ring i was so so happy to get these i love the artwork it's actually done by the original artist the one who originally did soul ring mark tedden um that's the one i did have in this deck actually was the original soul ring which hang on a second i have it right next to me. here it is Here's the original, or well, it's the um, uh, it's the revised version, but the original artwork. Um, but you can see that both of these are by Mark Tedden. So I thought that was really cool that they got him to come in and do this new artwork for this promo. Uh, then we have Arcane Signet. I feel like this is the new, not the new Soul Ring, but you know, Soul Ring is a staple in any deck. I feel that Arcane Signet is a staple in any multicolored deck. Um, you know, as long as you've got at least two colors, then this has to go in there. Then we have Helm of the Host. This causes problems. You get Aurelia the War Leader out with this, and you can pretty much win right there. Uh, you know, depending on, you know, if your opponents have something snappy to response with, but for the most part, you put this out and equip it to her. It makes a copy of her, except she's not legendary ignoring the legend rule and each co uh, each copy uh, their tr their trigger to have another combat phase will keep going and going and going so this can give you infinite attacks until nobody has any life left then we have the immortal sun I put this in here uh, one I have no planeswalkers in this deck so it doesn't negative effect uh, negatively affect me uh, extra draw gives me a spell reduction for everything and then also pumps your creatures so this is super helpful again no negative effect so it's absolutely wonderful all right and last we're going to look at our lands our mana base of course starting off first with the uh the classic boris land the sacred foundry i was super lucky i actually pulled this in my first pre-release kit 
of Guilds of Ravnica. Um, didn't actually get to play in pre-release, uh, pre but the uh, the local store that I was at had already done their pre-release, and they were just you know selling the packs. So I bought two of them. Um, very, very, not very expensive, but this the price of this actually shot up quite a bit. I believe it release. Um, I really don't remember the exact price, but this is going to be one of the more expensive cards in guilds at this moment. Then, of course, we have Boros Guildgate. Uh, I just like the way that this art looks. Plus, it has Aurelia's quote down at the bottom. Then we have the Boros Garrison. Uh, comes in tapped, and you have to put something back in your hand, or a land back in your hand. Uh, but it does tap for both colors. And uh, what is nice, of course, is you can you know go ahead and tap a land for mana and use it, and then bounce that one back to your hand. So, not that big a deal. Uh, then we have uh, Sun Home. The Fortune of the Legion, Fortress of the Legion. Uh, you can add colorless and then you can put in two colorless and red white. Uh, target creature gains double strike. So four is a little expensive, I think, to give one creature double strike. But if you have one of the severely pumped up creatures, like uh, what did we say earlier? Anya could be up to a 13 13 or something like that. You know, very, very devastating. You give that double strike and yeah, that can cause a lot of damage. Then we have Clifftop Retreat. Um, I really like the artwork on this one. I do have the original one that I believe is from Innistrad, but the artwork on this one is just better in my opinion. Uh, it comes in tapped unless you have a mountain or planes. Then we have Temple of Triumph uh, from M20. comes in tapped, but it is a scry land. Let's a scry card. And then we have our basics. Uh, we have, I believe, 14 planes and 15 mountains and I was able to get my hands on extras. I did buy the Boros Guild Kit that came out uh, but of course that didn't have enough lands for a commander deck obviously so uh, I was very fortunate to get my hands on some of these extra lands. Uh, they're not super pricey anymore they used to be I think some of them still are but you know nothing over like $1.50 or $2 depending on where you look at so there is the entire deck uh, again our wonderful commander Aurelia the war leader uh, stands for justice and all that it even says down here in flavor text let's get the camera to focus there we go where Razia was aloof and untouchable Aurelia is on the front line calling for war yes very devastating uh, the only thing really right now that I would change in this deck and I, I have it already uh, is a smothering tithe uh, I just haven't quite figured out what I want to take out yet what most likely will happen is I'll just take out one of the mountains and uh, sleeve in the smothering tithe just for some extra mana. Uh, let's look at this again. Of course, smothering tithe being amazing. Uh, whenever an opponent draws a card, they either pay two or you get a treasure. And after a while, they get tired of paying the two. Especially if you're playing against a, uh, a draw deck, you know, someone that wants to draw cards. So definitely going to get put in here eventually what uh, like I said what I'll probably do is end up just taking out one of the mountains uh, and that'll be that'll be set then I will have a deck list posted in the con or in the uh, description area to be on deck stats um, you know it'll of course be updated as I make changes to the deck so uh, if you you know you're watching this a little bit you know after I've posted it and you don't see something in the video that's on the deck list that's just what I've changed out I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I will be doing other deck techs. I've got about nine other EDH decks, uh, and I'll be looking at doing deck techs for those. I've got a couple of cards on the way for one of them, so I'm going to you know, hold that one off, but be looking forward to some other ones. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Have a good one.